this opportunity. Let's go crush. Let's let's recalibrate shit. oppression, against colonialism, imperialism, capitalism, mm. against all of that. That was the original spirit of hip-hop from its earth, like make what you need on your own. Don't you have to go to the store. You have a mind, make your table, make your chair, make your clothes, mm. make your books. Have an existence unto yourself. The real meaning of self-determination. You got the light. That shit is really bright. Knowing that my skills are tight and my whole shit is right. Now I want you to keep the camera on me. What you looking at is an EMCEE. -E. And what that means is that's not a light getting clearer. That's the mirror. I'm talking about me and you. Look at how we do. This is not me and you. This is one, not two. You gotta understand what a uni is. Put the verse, that's what the universe is. When you know it's one song, then you know what's right from what is wrong. You're dealing with hip-hop. Okay. You're dealing with the transformation of subjects and objects according to your perception. Mm -hmm. And this is what we knew. We, we knew that this, like, you know, okay, is a spoon. This is only called a spoon because I was trained in school to think it was a spoon. I was told in school, this is a S-P-O-O-N, spoon. Say it, class, spoon. You use it like this, spoon. We walk around with that colonial education. This is a spoon. But if we step outside of that education, we'll see that this is just matter. What we are calling things is not what things are. This is not a spoon. This is what we are calling this thing. Mm -hmm. Whatever this is, spoon is not what it is. That's not the truth of this. Mm. Spoon is not the truth of this. What is the truth of this? And that journey to find out the truth of this is what our people were about. We didn't care whether it was, it was the, Margie up the block said it was a spoon. David up the block said it was a Gigi. <laughs> and when David of the Block said Gigi, he used it as a Gigi. He used it as a, the same thing. The same, this is the same thing. 
but what you call it, what, what your perception is looking at it, is how it's going to respond to you. So our people realize nothing is what it, none of this is what it is. It's all names, terms, titles, names. We look past that. That means now you have no more problems in your life because if you can change whatever is coming to you, you, you know, some evil is coming to you, you change it to good. That's God. That, that ability only rests with the gods. That's it. And we proved it through slavery. And even though slavery is a horrible crime against our humanity, it proves our divinity. We still here. I'm still talking to my brothers right now with the same conviction my father had a thousand, two, three, four, five thousand years ago. They did not defeat us. They only captured us. They didn't conquer us. The first thing the colonists did when he arrived on the shores of the Americas was he outlawed the drum. There was a sacredness to the boom, boom, bap that the devil could not stand. That sound was like kryptonite. It was like a cross to a vampire. Every time he heard boom, boom, bap, he ran. Now they want you to soften up and shit. Drums are getting real small. Tight. Y'all wanna hear some boom bap? Sit back, relax, and reacquaint yourself. Get back to the original primitive, savage, make itself. Brace yourself, recreate yourself, make yourself. For too long you've been taught to hate yourself. Man, don't forsake yourself. Recreate yourself, take yourself much higher. History's not your story, the devil is a liar. Listen to nothing the outside world says about you. The world is meant to distract you, reroute you, then doubt you. Most of these rappers about the world. KRS is about you. So remember what I taught you about how to in and out to go inside your inner city quickly go within you have an interview with the energy that's within you ask yourself why you why now why here then it becomes quite clear you are divine you should not fear bills you should not fear thrills you should not stare focus your attention on god it's right here And all of y'all 
part of the DVD version of it. Street light. That was it. Ah, uh, that was B more. <coughs> that was B more right there. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of street knowledge and street philosophy. What we're calling street light. If you don't have the perspective of the streets, how can you say you're studying philosophy? Now, of course, this might be obvious to some people, but when you look at philosophy in its formal sense, like the way it's being taught in universities, the way people approach philosophy, at least what I'm hearing in terms of philosophy, people feel that if they quote other philosophers, somehow they are a philosopher because they can quote other philosophers. Reading about philosophy is not how you become a philosopher. What makes you a philosopher is how well you can think, what you can see. This is the point, and this is what I try to bring out in my rhymes, especially when I'm on stage. Time is relevant only to you. Your space is only relevant to the shit you do. Everybody got a slice of this bread, but the way you dice it up is the perception in your head. So if you believe you old, you old. If you believe you young, you young. If you believe you number two, you number two. And if you believe you number one. Today you have soulless people walking around. And that's a hard thing to say. Everybody want to think they have a soul. Until you say express it. Then, then they're reaching and first searching and find, what does it mean to have a soul? It means that you empathize with the next being. Mm. You can feel outside of yourself. You, your, your soul is out here. Mm -hmm. You know, so you could feel, you could feel plants. You could feel the next man's pain. You could feel a woman's uh, 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 aspirations for herself. You could feel a young kid's, uh, you know, whatever. You could mm. feel it. Nobody mm. has to tell you or talk mm. to you. You could feel it. We used to be a community of, of people who communicated like this. Not a lot of words. What today we say psychic? Mm. It's not psychic. It's the soul united. So you, I mean, I'm your brother. I'm your sister. You, you don't have to talk for me to know that you're hungry. Mm. You don't have to talk for me to know that you're tired. Talk for me to know. But now we enter this colonial society. And by the way, we entered here by choice too. Jesus. So the future me. It's watching me. It's watching me right now, MC. And this is what I say to raise your wealth. Right now, you got to be a friend to your future self. The 40-year-old you is depending on you to do the things that you're supposed to do. The 60-year-old you is depending on you to do right now what you're supposed to do. So be a friend to your future self. Take that unwritten script off the shelf. <laughs> Finish that DVD. Finish your CD. Don't see me. See you when you see me. This right here is your future self. KRS-One reps nothing else. Knowledge reigns I give a little bit of philosophy to help people to understand their potential. And what is their potential? You know, from the time we're very, very young, we're brought up in a school system that basically gives us question and answer at the same time. It's like your young mind coming into school, you don't know how to read, write, count, nothing. You don't know history, nothing. And the first thing they teach you is Christopher Columbus discovered America or that you should know who, who the president is, or you should know something about American history. So you right away gotta learn of American history before you even learn of your own history. It's this foundational type of education that strips the average person from being able to even be a philosopher. You're trained from day one to see reality based on words. Now get this. The point to philosophy 
is to get to the truth of things. Let's look at it formally real quick. Philosophy. Philo means love. Sophie is wisdom. Philo, Sophie, philosophy, love of wisdom. But when you break philosophy down, <clears throat> philosophy breaks down into science, ethics, and metaphysics. Some people add theology and also psychology to philosophy. But the main parts of philosophy is science, ethics, and metaphysics. And when we say science, we mean natural science, natural uh, 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 knowledge of nature, basically. Physics, knowledge of nature. What, what is matter? What's, what is it that we're, we're holding and seeing? Nature, knowledge of nature, how nature functions. That's science. Then you have ethics. Ethics is human behavior. Ethics deals with human behavior, but most people relegate ethics to right and wrong. What is right and what is wrong? You know, morals kind of thing. What makes a person moral? You know, conscience, not conscious, your conscience. All of this comes under ethics. Then you got metaphysics. Metaphysics breaks down into three other pieces. Metaphysics is all about getting at the, at the uh, uh, the the center of something, the cause of it, the difference between something that is uh, real versus its appearance, something that is um, appears to be true. Uh, metaphysics wants to know: Is it really true? What makes a thing tick? What makes things function? Now, when you deal with metaphysics, what you're dealing with also is cosmology, epistemology, and ontology. Cosmology deals with the universe, stars, the universe, all that stuff. Epistemology is the origins of knowledge. Where does knowledge come from? What, what, how can we know? It's in epistemology also that we get the science of objectivity and subjectivity. We'll get back to that. And then finally you have ontology, which is the science of being, first causes. It's, the, oh, it's, the, it's, it's not the science, it's the study of being ultimate being. This is where we study God, this is where we study spirit, the nature of the human ontology. Now all of these ologies and all of these breakdowns are all Greek. Okay, let's start there. And they're all European. We're throwing all that out the window, okay? Because none of that makes any sense in comparison to the ancient way. Now before the Greco-Roman imperialists invaded Africa and pretty much killed the first philosophers, before their, what I just explained to you, before all that, philosophy was based on a balanced character. Philosophy was based on the deification of the human to go from an animal state to a godlike state. This is what the Africans were studying. They weren't interested in all these other science, natural law. They realized that once you know yourself, once the truth is within you, you could look at anything and see the truth of it. But when you're a colonist, see, when you're invading someone else's land, you, 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 truth disappears the moment injustice arises. The minute there's an injustice, truth is gone. Wisdom is gone. You can't say you're a philosopher, but don't have the character of that which you are studying. <sighs> wow. Looks like it's gonna be a storm out there. Crazy. Welcome to Streetlight. Of course, I am on the Queen Mary too. And um, we're on a quest for knowledge. And I'm taking you guys with me so that you could also be part of that quest. You know, when we say street light, we're talking about the streets and that light. <laughs> we're talking about knowledge from the streets or knowledge for the streets. Street light is philosophy, it's street knowledge, and this is where philosophy begins. What makes you a philosopher is how you think what you're able to see, and how far that seeing actually goes. But then you got something to my teachers that really came to your town just to see you. Creature, let you know what it is. Let you know that hip-hop really lives. <laughs> yeah, you better get it. Come on, I think the teacher once said it. Rap is something we do, hip-hop is something we live. Something we do, the pop is something we do, the pop is something we do, the pop is something we do.
Yeah, let's get started. Let's get right to work. First, what is hip? Hip means to know. That's it. What is hop? Hop is a springing upward. That's all it is. Hop doesn't mean anything. It's a springing upward to move forward. Kangaroos hop. Certain birds hop. Bunnies hop. Grasshoppers hop. Hop to move forward. Springing upward to move forward. When you combine hip with hop, you get hip awareness. Hop springing up. This is all hip hop is. But as scholars, if we're going to discuss what this really, really is, let's just deal with the word itself. Hip, to know. Hop, movement. Hip, consciousness, awareness. I understand. Hop, springing forward, leaping up. Hop also means uh, a party. Like a jam. Let's go to the hop. There used to be a song in the 50s. In the 50s, the jam was called a hop. The gathering was called a hop. The party was called a hop. So you could also say hip hop. Hop as a gathering. Hip, I am aware. Hop of the gathering. I am aware of the group. I am aware of my leaping forward. I know why I move. That's the purpose and meaning of hip hop. Hip to know, hop to move. When you're hip to your hop, you know why you move. This is the beginning of freedom right here. Words are extremely important to the brain. In fact, as I teach often, the brain cannot see without words. The brain sees its reality through words, through your vocabulary. The more words you know, the more things you can see. People don't realize this, but the what they are calling reality is based on their vocabulary. So if you have a broader vocabulary, you'll have a broader reality. You can see more things. Now this may be hard to believe, but believe it or not, there are things going on in your environment right now that you don't have a word for, so you just don't see them. You overlook them. In fact, the whole room is perceived by you according to your vocabulary. I talked about this in the Gospel of Hip Hop, which I'm reaching for right now. And in the Gospel of Hip Hop, we, we, we have a section called, the, uh, called Awareness. It's actually in the uh, fourth overstanding uh, under the H law, uh, Health, Love, Awareness, and Wealth. This is the Awareness section that I'm reading from right now. It's just a, a quick piece. If an electrician walked into a room with a person untrained and unskilled in electronics, it is safe to say that the electrician and the unskilled individual would view the room in two different ways. The electrician would walk into the room and see things that the untrained, unskilled individual would not. It's the same room, but the electrician sees the room in one way and the untrained individual sees the room in another way. Neither person is wrong in their interpretation of the room. It is just that the electrician has a certain knowledge that gives her the ability to see the room in a different way, even in a more expanded way. The electrician, just by glancing at the room, would habitually take special notice to the room's electrical outlets, lighting fixtures, wiring, etc. The electrician could ascertain certain things about the room that the untrained person simply could not. It is not that the electrician is a better person or even more intelligent than the untrained individual. It is simply a matter of awareness. 
Because of a certain knowledge, the electrician has access to a different sight, a broader view. Even deeper, we can see how the one room changes several times according to the observer's knowledge or awareness of that room. The electrician sees one kind of room, and the untrained individual sees another kind of room. But in reality, there is only one room. The room would change again if a professional painter accompanied the untrained individual and the electrician into the same room. The painter's knowledge of paint and wall textures would reveal an entirely different room to the painter than the electrician and the unskilled individual might be capable of seeing. Because of their levels of awareness, the painter, the electrician, and the untrained individual would all see the same room in three different ways, and each view of the room would be correct and true for the viewer. The room would change a fourth time if the painter, the electrician, and the untrained individual were then accompanied by a professional plumber. The point here is that your perception of your environment is created by, by the amount of awareness or knowledge that you have. Your reality is based upon your knowledge. Awareness comes to us by way of knowledge or inspiration. The more things we know and feel, the more things we can see. Anything that the brain doesn't have a word for, it cannot see. It sort of overlooks the object or subject. Therefore, the more words we know, the more things we can see and experience. Everything that our eyes sense must be pictorially identified in our minds in order for us to actually see it, or more accurately, notice it. In fact, you don't see what you've never seen. You don't notice what you don't have a previous reference for. Things are going on all around you right now, but because these things are not in your immediate vocabulary, you remain unaware of such things and their happenings until they are pointed out to you. You don't actually see them, nor do they actually affect you consciously. Know this, we see, act, and feel according to our vocabulary. Gospel of Hip Hop. in the beginning, the philosopher, philosopher, is the lover, philo, of wisdom, sofa, or sophie, lover of wisdom. But when you start to actually walk the path of the philosopher, you realize that that philo, sophie, becomes a balancing act. It's not just love of wisdom, it's actually love and wisdom, meaning love and balanced with wisdom. This is important for the philosopher. This is important for people who love, beings of love. Often we love, they say unconditional love, or you know, we're just loving. But without wisdom, that can be very painful to live, live a life of love without wisdom, without a gate around your heart. So first we look at the philosopher, the philosopher, as the one that loves wisdom. But when you walk the path and have to develop the character of the philosopher, you notice that that word philosopher becomes love and wisdom, the balance between love and wisdom, the balance between 
the emotions and the intellect, the balance between soul and mind. Now, let's go a little further. Why is this important? Why is the balance between the soul and the mind important? Or should I say the emotions and the mind? Why is that important? Because when you're seeking to create reality or you're studying reality, ontology, when you're seeking to create reality, your character is very important. In fact, what you're going to create when you say I'm creating reality or I'm going to manipulate reality, I'm practicing the, the, how to manipulate and flow even with reality itself. When you say that, it is your character that is going to manifest the reality. It's not your prayers, it's not meditation, it's not visualization. These things are the techniques that, that, that help to usher things along, but what, but what you're actually going to get is your character. What, what you're actually going to receive in your meditation, receive in your visualization, what you're actually going to receive in prayer is you. You're going to receive your character through whatever it is you desire or need or, or whatever. So get this, without the proper character, you create realities that you don't really want. You may say, well, I, I prayed for this and I prayed for that, or I visualized this, or I, I meditated on that, but this came. Well, that's because that's your true character. This is your true nature. Now what you want to do is work on your true nature, work on your true character. This is where we get to being. This is where we get to, to what is the essence of you? What is the essence of your existence?
so the philosopha is the one who loves wisdom, loves learning, loves knowledge. Now this word philosophy is a Greek term, but the concept of loving wisdom is not Greek. The concept of loving wisdom comes out of ancient Africa. This is where the first philosophers originate from. They traveled all of Africa, north, south, east, and west, the whole continent of Africa. This is before Africa was considered even a continent. It was just one landmass that people lived upon. So what we have is a group of people that are learning how to be self-aware. This begins in Africa. Now, according to paleoanthropology, the first self-aware humans are supposed to come out of Southern Africa. The first self-aware human beings, what we call homo sapiens, and sapien because sapien means wise. These first homo sapiens or homo man, sapien, wise, wise man, was the first to go from a so-called animal state to a, what we now call a human state. So when we talk about philosophy, even in its modern sense, what we're talking about is a state of going from one area of, of you know, going from a state of ignorance and immaturity to a state of knowing and maturity. Anytime you're going from a state of not knowing to a state of knowing, you're practicing philosophy. Now, the original humans, Homo sapiens, originate out of Africa. They are literally called wise men and women, of course, wise humans. This is paleoanthropology. So try to remember the first philosophers were wise individuals. What makes you human, even, is wisdom and knowledge, not necessarily your physical appearance or what you can do with your body. Intelligence and knowing is the seat of humanity. Listen, there's two of me. 
One is the visible, the other you can't see. But you're about to see because your mind is free. For you, there is no T-I-M-E. There is no time, no space. That's Einstein, relativity. Read the page. You gotta understand what I'm saying. At 3 a.m. I'm in my bed and I'm not playing. I'm in my bed and I'm in meditation. And I'm visualizing back on this situation. The three o'clock me is standing with me right now. And it's telling me the lyrics and how I should move how. See, you can overstand the mind. When you know the mind, then you know there is no time. You can understand exactly what I mean. Because I could be right here, or I could be 15. In 1985, everybody else was running around trying to survive. But me, I knew I had a mind. I wasn't in 85, I was in 2009. See, if you can't see your future, you ain't gonna go there. That's how you become the loser. You gotta see your future. You are your only friend. This is what you gotta get used to. I'm giving you a different angle. Not a symbol or a triangle. You are your guardian angel. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is hip-hop culture that I'm telling you. See, to be hip is to be aware. Hop is this, like you springing in the air. So when you put awareness to the hop, it means intelligence rising up to the top. See, this is what hip-hop is. This is why we gotta teach it to all our kids. Because when you hit to your hop, you know why you move knowledge of self. We just prove. Turn it up! We're coming in now to the English Channel where, where the trip is now over and it's been seven days and we're now coming into Southampton, England through the English Channel. Now, what's interesting about England, our trip to England, we are here because we're gonna see the British Library, we're gonna look at the British Museum, we may even get over to Oxford English University. What's important is that the foundational knowledge in which we're seeking is based on words and based on language. And it's the proper use of language and words that helps us to see philosophy a little more clear. You see, the philosopher is looking for reality, looking for what is true versus what is false, what is right versus what is wrong. And even those words, right, and wrong in an English language and culture you got to know what those words really mean everyone else could just go along and say oh I know what's right I know what's wrong I, I know good I know evil um, I know what bad is you know so on but the philosopher is interested seriously in what these principles represent and what society feels that these principles represent is found in the words in which society uses. So here we are now in Southampton, England, and we're getting ready to get our car. Of course, I have my international driver's license. I'm gonna rent me a car and get to the first show. Let's see what we get. When you are hip to your hop, when you are aware of why you are getting up, this is the beginning of success. Because the only reason people are not successful is because they can't control themselves. It's the only reason. If you could control yourself, you would control yourself right to your success. 
If you could just go where you wanted to go and be who you wanted to be, you would go to your success and you would be success. Nothing would stop you. The problem is we're not hip to our hop. We really don't know why we're doing what we're doing. We wake up every day and it's a habit. Oh, I got to do this. Why? Because I got to do it. Why? Because I got to do it. Why? Because I got to do it. We don't know why we're moving. And then to go further, when you walk into your environment, you, we really don't understand how the environment moves us. We walk into environments, and if one thing is hot over here, we run over here. If it's cold over here, we run back to the heat. Oh, no, it's too hot. We run. A car screeches. Ears go. Something to look at. So all senses going in five different directions. How can you be successful? If you could just control your eyes, you would be successful. What does that mean? It means that we can't even control our own eyes. This is what advertising is all about. A flashing light over here, you must look. Something desirable. Money you know, sensual, billboards, they get you every time. You gotta look at it. When you leave here today, train your eyes to only see your success. Just as an exercise, train your eyes to only see your success. Let's go deeper with this. Hip means to know, hop is movement. When you're hip to your hop, you know why you move. All it means is you are aware of yourself. That's hip hop. The philosophical mind is a mind that can see past what is presented as reality. We start with looking at words because the brain has a tough time seeing without words. So when you're discussing reality, you have to even look at the very term reality and see what that, what that word and what that sound wave is producing in your mind. leads you to when you're trying to teach people and let them know what it is you never know where you might wind up and this is one of those spots right here it's not a conventional spot but it's Brixton I don't think anything's conventional out here Oh, what's this? They closed it? How are you supposed to do this? Oh, okay.
consciousness. If I have one thing to say to each and every one of you, it's that some of you are on a spiritual path. You're seeking yourself. Here's the lesson for today. You are thinking that you're distant from yourself, distant from your enlightenment, that you must search it out. No. What you got to understand is the minute you say, man, I think I want to live a spiritual life. Man, I think I want to find myself. I think I want to figure this out. I don't want to be trapped by the fucking system. I want to try to fit. The minute you say that shit, the universe has responded. Now, here's the point to the universe. It takes years for the universe's knowledge to get to you. We see this with the sun in the sky every day. The sun, 93 million miles away from us. We still feel the heat of that shit. 93 million miles away. But guess what? The sun is always eight minutes ahead of the earth. Get what I'm saying? Eight minutes ahead. So that means that if the sun blew up, and disappeared from the universe. We wouldn't know that shit for eight minutes. You still be looking at the sun. That shit been gone. You still looking at it because the light has not hit us yet. It takes about eight minutes for the sun's light to actually hit us. So you got to look at the universe. When you talk to the universe, talk to the universe. But the universe has a way of responding. It's not going to hit you right there when you're talking. It's going to take time for the universe to hit you, for the light to come to you. What you got to do is stay consistent with your word. This is called integrity. Being consistent with your word. And eventually, the universe is light. It comes to you. Now get this. Some stars are even further than the sun. Like, they're like two years out. So remember this. When you talk to the universe, know the universe. Know how it works. Know how it responds. Because many of us are talking to the universe, but we're using television and radio and these images to think, oh, I'm supposed to be in a Buddhist position in order to be enlightened. Uh, I gotta crack a Bible in order to be enlightened. Uh, uh, I gotta go and pray in this. Uh, mm, nope, sorry. The minute you decree the word, the universe has already responded, already responded, it's instant like that. But the light of that has to hit you in time. You are already enlightened right now. And let me show you the living proof of it. You're here right now. This is the proof, this is the proof right here. A flyer went out and it said, knowledge reigns supreme, it's gonna be talking right here. Gonna be spitting the raw right here. Everybody heard that shit, but only a few are here now. Listen, listen. Your enlightenment is about the choices you make. Now, other people heard it. They saw the flyer. They said, damn, man, I wish I could go. Oh, man, I want to see KRF. Oh, man, I want to get in there. I want to, but they didn't come. <laughs> they didn't sweat it out. They didn't go. They didn't make reservations, so they didn't get a babysitter. They didn't park the car. They didn't get them so They didn't get here. This is how and why you are enlightened. You cannot be standing in front of an enlightened being and not be enlightened yourself. The universe is only talking to itself. We don't exist. We're the skin and all this hand and all this shit. These are illusions. What really matters are the choices you make, the intentions you have, and the integrity you keep. Music! You know, you can't be a, a warrior and an astronomer. 
those people that were studying the stars, our ancestors, they were not the hunter-gatherers that we're taught about in school and other places. There's a whole civilization that is not being discussed. And this invisible civilization, where we come from, is what we call hip-hopia. The people of this ancient invisible civilization were the astronomers, were the agriculturalists, were the architects. When you're an architect, an astronomer, an agriculturalist, you're not destroying, robbing, invading other people's territories. It's not part of your character. And this is the point to this, t to this teaching. Character. With character, we can see where our ancestors actually were, who they were, and what happened to them. You know, as I often teach, the brain cannot see without words. And this is true, but it is true only of the colonial society. It is not true of reality itself. The brain can see more than just words, but we have been reduced to seeing our reality through words, symbols, numbers, shapes, and so on. This is why it's important when you're discussing reality that you also take a look at the culture by which you're looking at your reality through. The culture is defined by the language and it's the language that you speak that is also defining the reality in which you're seeing and experiencing. If you speak a different language, you'll get a different reality. So let us go a little further with this. What do we mean by this? Well, most people learn their literal education in grade school. You have a grade school education and you learn words, terms, meanings, really how to function within society based on your grade school education. But then you get a cultural education that is happening to you through your family, through other institutions like maybe religious institutions uh, and so on, friends, family, and other uh, uh, social interactions which become your cultural knowledge. So now you have two different brands of thinking, two different ways in which you're approaching your existence, your history in that sense. One is the literal knowledge that you learn in school. The other is the cultural knowledge you grow up with every day. An example of this is say the word incredible, for instance. Most people, intellectuals, to the layman on the street, use the word incredible. When something good happens, when something memorable happens, you say, man, that was incredible. But literally, when you look at the word incredible, incredible means not credible. In fact, the word incredible points to a fraudulent situation, somebody who's a fraud, a lie, uh, and something not credible. But all through society, through English society, both in Britain and in the United States, memorable and great events are called incredible. And everyone understands what that means. That's the cultural language superseding your literal knowledge, so to speak. So when you look, when you're able to step back and look at these two things, you begin to break apart that colonial indoctrination that got us looking at ourselves according to their interpretation.
nice bookstore across the street from the British Museum. And this place is taking all of my money and time. Uh, I would sit here and just read for days. So you can see the rare books are all around. Uh, this is what it is. So I'm getting these copies of Johnson's Dictionary. Johnson is very important uh, to English language because the Oxford English Dictionary, which is actually the standard, quotes Johnson uh, and them. why I move. I'm going to train my eyes to only see my success. I'm only going to look for my success. I'm not going to allow my eyes to be distracted with things that have nothing to do with my success. I'm not going to let my ears hear things that have nothing to do with my success. When, when so other stuff start coming to my ears that ain't got nothing to do with my success, I'm shutting it off and I'm walking in a different, I'm turning the music up. I'm, I'm, I'm looking again to hear my success. When I speak, I'm only speaking of my success. I'm not speaking doubt. I'm not speaking fear. I'm not speaking guilt. I'm not speaking that. I'm speaking my success when I speak. Okay, we out of here. You'll notice the things that are natural to you are things that the more you use them, the better they get. And the mind is the same way. The mind with words is the same way. The more words you use, the more your mind gets used to seeing those words and then starts seeing it in your everyday reality. It's like, if you don't use your soul, if you don't project your mind, if you don't seek your purpose, then it's sort of like, you know, use it or lose it kind of thing. Spirituality is the same way. Either you use your spiritual abilities, use your mental abilities, your soul light. Use that or it begins to dissipate and go away. This is something we don't want. We want vibrancy. We want a vibrant soul. But to do that, you have to have the courage to live in the soul's environment. What is the soul's environment? Well, the soul's environment is really, you gotta understand, you are, the soul is not in you. You are in the soul. Your brain is here in your head, but your mind is in your environment. Divine mind is creating your brain. Let me end on this. What I want you to understand today is that the culture that we call hip hop is an environment. It is a mental environment. Hip hop does not come into the material world. It never exists here. There's no hip hop in the material world. It's not here. The only time hip hop becomes material is when we become it. You can't go to hip hop. You can't eat hip hop, drink hip hop. You can't wear hip hop. Hip hop does not exist in the material world. Hip hop exists in hip hopia. 
It exists in its own place. It's not here. Hip-hop is nowhere here. Yet we all know it. Yo, welcome to the street light. Real knowledge, this is what it be like. Yo, I'm KRS, I wrote a new book. But I'm doing it on the mic now without a hook. Off the top freestyle we going. This is what it is all day, we flowing. And when I say flow, I mean follow life's outcome willingly, you know? Let's go, this is the freestyle. Pay a rest one coming back, meanwhile. Y'all gotta sit back and see me, child. I'll be coming through like Beach Street and Wild Style. Y'all know the deal, this is KRS. Put the DVD in, you know the rest. Knowledge reigns supreme. I'm on the mic, freestyle off the top. Huh. Good night. Shit is